You're listening to the E2C Network, podcast by Auburn fans for Auburn fans. We're Eagle Auburn fans, and welcome to Tiger Tracks, your source for Auburn track and field and cross-country news and discussion. I'm your host, Jessica Loomis, and I am here with my husband and co-host, Kyle, to discuss the first outdoor track meet of the 2021 season. It's your favorite time of the year, Jessica, not Christmas. Outdoor Outdoor track. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it's the first time we've had it in two stinking years. Yeah, uh, pandemic kind of did you in, didn't it? Pandemic ruined it. It Ru- ruined a lot of things. Especially outdoor track and field season. So explain to people really briefly, again, because I know we've gotten some new listeners since then, why you prefer outdoor to indoor. Because to me, you hate the cold. So it would seem to me like even during this time of year where there can st- tend to be some chilly mornings, you might actually enjoy indoor temperatures a little bit more. No, 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 no. Indoor is still cold. Let's not let's not think that it's not. Why they Don't they have like heat in there and all that kind no, of stuff? No, most places don't. It's just a barn see, indoors. See, I don't know these things because I'm not a track and field aficionado. But also, outdoor track, you get a 400 meter track that's not banked. It is flat. It is normal. It's not wooden. It's not banked. It is flat. And it's not banked. I think you said it's flat twice. I also said it's banked three times. Are you sure that it's flat and banked? Or not banked? Or something? (laughs) 10,000%. Also, with outdoor, you get javelin, which clearly we can't do indoors. I was going to ask you about that, because obviously I see my girl Kylie Carter's back in this. Why can't they throw indoor? Oh! Safety! But hold hold on. But it's, It's a big vaulted, like... No, arena. it's not. It's not that big. You can't. No. I feel you like would it, stab somebody. The ones that I've seen online, and I think I've even seen one in person before. I thought that they could throw it and still not hit anything. No, javelin's an outdoor sport. Oh, I see. These are the things I didn't know. I'm just exactly. so. I don't know. I feel like if you can throw other things in a building, you should be able to throw. But they don't throw all the things. They don't throw discus inside. Why not? Safety. But what's 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 less Listen, safe? Listen, I don't have all the track and field answers. <laughs> But you also get the 400 meter hurdles, which you do not get indoors, which to me, that's kind of Satan's doing. But anyway. Whoa, Satan's doing. Hold on. What's... 400 meters on a track with hurdles? Kyle, there is nothing harder. I'll be honest. I would rather run a marathon than do 400 meters worth of hurdles. That's pretty intense. That's some pretty intense yeah. level of hatred you got those, there. <laughs> those people that do 400 meter hurdles, they have all the athletic ability in the world. I, I guess I wouldn't know because I probably couldn't get over. I couldn't probably even look at a hurdle without falling over. So honestly, that's true. Well, we know that's true for you as well. You you struggle with stairs, so let's not talk about okay. hurdles. Okay. <laughs> well, you struggle with words. Uh, that's very true. And I'm a podcaster. What does that tell you? So outdoor track is here. We are excited. Mm-hmm. We are here for it. It is March. It is spring. It is the time of the running. And it is nice to come home to start off the season. Exactly. So the first meet, obviously, was like Kyle said, the Tiger Track Classic. At Auburn, held March nineteenth and twentieth. Can I just point out something? I feel like we need to switch up the names here because I feel like it's the it's always the Tiger Classic. The and this is not just track and field. So hear me out. Like when they have a softball tournament or a baseball tournament, it's always like the War Eagle Invite and stuff like that. Like it all sounds great, but I feel like we use those so much. Well, what do you think it is out in Arkansas and stuff? It's the Razorback Invite. It's the Woo We Run It Around Invite. <laughs> oh my gosh! No, it's not. <laughs> I could just see them coming around the bed. Woo! Pixie! Oh my Razorbacks! God. Sorry. I'm pretty sure that's not what they do. And then if you're Vanderbilt, if they have a track and field, what do you, how do you like coordinate anchor down with running? Because if you throw an anchor, you can't go fast. So are you saying that then all the Auburn athletes should go, whoa? Oh, that'd be so nice. As they come around? Yes! There you go. Of course, they're probably trying to breathe. Exactly. Anyway. So pretty sure they're, nobody's yelling woo Pixie or anything. Sorry, that's my tangent for today. Oh, but if you're an Alabama fan and you stink at jumping and you fall, you could do roll tide. Like you roll across the field. <laughs> like you hit a hurdle and you just roll on the track. Mm, that's, that was, <laughs> you've had better work than that before. <laughs> I thought that was comical. It was, it was all right. Well, speaking of Alabama, they actually were at this meet. Mm. There were 14 teams. They, I knew something smelled at Auburn this weekend. Yep. Well, Alabama was one of them. We also had Alabama State, Clemson. Mm-hmm. Florida State, another big school. Louisville, MTSU. Middle Tennessee State, in case you didn't know. Okay, because I didn't. That's why <laughs> I called it MTSU. <laughs> I don't know of another MTSU out there, so we're going to assume that's Middle Tennessee. Well, that would make sense. Ole Miss, South Alabama, South Carolina, Tennessee, Troy, 
UAB and Vanderbilt, both UAB and Vandy only had women, though. Oh, there you go. There was a Van. So, uh, Vanderbilt people, we need to hear from you. How do you justify your battle cry being anchored down and then running? This is weird to me. You got some of the usual suspects. Honestly, I'm more impressed that you know that that was their battle cry was anchor down. You never seen that before? That's what they always literally do. never. I think they even have like a hand signal where they make an anchor or something. I'm trying to. You guys can't see this. Yeah, on the I was podcast. gonna say. So this is a podcast. So Kyle, they can't see. Just you imagine this. me trying with my hands to make an anchor. It's like that weird war eagle thing that some people do with their hands, and I think that's true. Oh, that is weird. Yeah, I, I can't do that. I'm not that talented. No, you're definitely not. A lot of the Alabama teams, obviously, with Alabama, UAB, Troy, uh, and South Alabama. There, not surprised to see the local teams there but you got some big names with clemson yeah florida state florida state they have I a think big people one. forget that florida state's kind of a powerhouse with running so yeah. yep arkansas couldn't grace us with their presence <laughs> please we don't want those little hogs over here because they'd be going Woo! as they go around the oh track oh my gosh sorry, i'm gonna start that's calling it. you what that's is it? it babe pig in the city yes yeah that'll do pig that'll do that'll do pig all right, Kyle. So let's start us off. Why don't you hit us with some of these highlights before we get to all of the meet results? All right, we'll start off with a familiar name from distance running and cross country. Tommy McDonough won. That's a gold medal, folks. The men's 5,000 meter with a frame, I said a frame, a time of 14 minutes, 27.72 seconds. Also, Dustin Lewis placed second and Carlos Bedix. Is that how you say that? What's Bedix? his name? Bedix? No, what's his first name, Kyle? Carson, not Your Carlos. Your brother's name. But it's with a C. That's why it threw me off. Carson Bedix, if I'm pronouncing that right, placed third. So we had a clean sweep of this event at the home invite. That's what I'm talking about. Yep. So moving on, we had your girl, Kylie Carter. Mm. She won the women's javelin with a throw of 54.76 meters. But that's not all, folks. We also swept this one. Ashley Carter placed second with a PR. And Kiara McCarroll placed third. Can I ask a question? Really dumb question. It's probably real dumb. Well, no. I mean, I think it's a, an honest mistake to make because they're very common names. Do you think Kylie and Ashley are, are sisters? No. Okay, they're not. So you, did you look that up? No. Okay, so you're just blatantly giving an answer that you have no... Correct. I'm just... Kyle, you just say it with authority and people believe it. The only reason I ask is because Auburn's had a history of Carter having is siblings. Carter a pretty common name. Yes, it is. But you, we've had the Muzarics that I know in the past. We've yes, had the Rogers. We've had um, the Iguanogonies have been part of this as yeah, well. Yeah, I love how you just blow past the Rogers. Well, no, no, no. I'm just acknowledging like that's a third. That's three we've named right there. So I think it's, we'll have to look into that and see if it's you know actually. You don't have? Who's that? The Loomises. Well, Jessica, they're not good athletes. As we established, we can't, you can't make it downstairs. I can't I make it over born hurdles. Loomis. Well, you married into it and that was your choice. So I'm sorry about that. <laughs> All right, some more highlights. Joshua Wallace got a PR in men's javelin with a throw of 62.32 meters, which earned him a silver medal, so second place for him. Also, Eric Ebel got a PR with a throw of 62.01 meters in the javelin and a third place finish. So we're already we're racking up the, the medals already in this. I'm really impressed with this. Imani Jones got a PR in the long jump with a jump of 5.93 meters and a third place finish. Uh, and I'll round us out with Matty Malone. Third in the women's hammer throw, and Kyle Brown placed third in the men's hammer throw. So, as hammer throw is a good event for us. Yeah. Like, what, what are you? Oh, you're talking about overall. I think third and third, men and women. That's true. Which we've seen this happening a lot this season is that we're not just seeing one side, men and women, dominate an area. We're seeing it kind of being picked up all the way around, which is why you're seeing not only an individual unit such as the men's or women's side getting ranked, but showing up big in postseason play we're getting more and more people representing us there yeah absolutely so let's move on to all the results now not just the highlights so for the men's 100 meter dash we had three competitors that we're going to talk about so just as a reminder for those who might be new we only talk about the top three finishers for auburn some events we have five six seven athletes compete so we just talk about the top three and um kind of hit the highlights there and I'm already seeing some people you let off, you left off of your highlights list here that I'm very upset about. Dante Brown? Yes. Did first? <laughs> she was like, wait a minute, what's she talking about? Yep. So There's the too many highlights is what you're saying. That's it, basically. So the men's 100 meter dash actually only had 14 competitors, which is really low for a 100 meter dash. But Dante Brown got gold. So not, not that that's not worthy of it, even, you know, however mm. few 
athletes there are. So he got the first place with a time of 10.15 seconds. Giovanni Murray placed second with a time of 10.39 seconds. And Jason Reese rounding out Auburn with an eighth place finish and 10.65 seconds. Happy to see Dante continuing what he started with an indoor. Exactly. I knew you'd be happy to see him back. Mm -hmm. So moving on to the 200 meter dash, we had Brandon Smiley placing first out of 18 athletes. With a time of 21.02. And then, I'm going to say it wrong, Kyle. Oh, you got it. I believe in you. Okendo? Yep. Okendo Bernard, placing 18th with a time of 23.35 seconds. Well, I just said yep yeah, because I'm assuming that's right, and that's okay. probably the way I would have said it. Well, I'm going with it. Another gold, folks. This is this is good. I'm liking all the gold, silver, and gold and bronze, silver. Okay. No, no. All right. The men's 400-meter dash. Uh, we got Malik Medivere. Is that how, is that how you pronounce yeah. it? Medivere? Medivere. The senior, fourth place finish out of 19 competitors, followed by John Murray, the freshman, 17th place out of 19th place finish with a run of 52.09 seconds. You actually didn't tell us Malik's time. I was getting there. I realized I had just blown past that like the sprinters and his time. <laughs> Malik's time was 47.96 seconds. The men's 800 meter, three competitors, Eric Brown. Uh, all of these guys are seniors. First place finish, 29 competitors. One minute, 50.5 seconds, followed by a couple of familiar names, Silas Kitnagic, uh, seventh place out of 29, one minute, 53.9 seconds, and Tommy McDonough, 11th out of 29, one minute, 54.7 seconds. Everybody's in the top half, and almost everybody's in the top 10 there. Yeah, absolutely. So, moving on to the distance races, we had the men's 3,000 meter with one competitor, Ryan Kinane. He placed third out of 15 athletes with a time of 8 minutes, 29.8 seconds, and he's a freshman doing that. You literally had too many highlights to post here, so now I forgive you for not putting everybody in there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And we're not even done yet. No. So we did talk about the men's 5,000 meter, though. Tommy McDonough placing first out of 18 athletes with a time of 14 minutes, 27.7 seconds, followed by Dustin Lewis, second place, 14 minutes, 39.3 seconds. And finally, Carson Bedix, third place, 14 minutes, 39.9 seconds. I'm going to steal one of Jessica's favorite events, the 4x100 meter uh, relay, I believe this. Was that the relay there? Yep. You just left it off. Okay, we have the competitors Brandon Smiley at the one position, then followed by Javon Murray, or Giovanni Murray, Jason Reese, and Dante Brown, the Phenom Sprinter, uh, being the anchor, what do you call that? Anchor leg. Good anchor job. leg. You I almost had it, right. had it right. Finishing with a time of 38. Point two four seconds. Next, I'll take on the hurdles, the men's 110 meter hurdles. Aquindo Bernard, sophomore, seventh out of 13 competitors with a run of 14.64 seconds, followed by David Edmondson, the freshman, 12th out of 13 with a run of 15.62 seconds. Well, then, like I said, Satan's event, <laughs> the 400 meter hurdles. Good job, Caden Seal. With an 11th place finish out of 14 athletes with a run of 55.86 seconds. You're impressed just for him finishing it. <laughs> Honestly, there is nothing more disappointing than realizing that people can run in 400 meter hurdles faster than I could run a 400 meter. It really, there's a lot of things that when you look at this and like, wow, I can't even like sniff, you know, the dust that they're throwing up behind yeah. me. That this, but even when you get to a level of this type of performance. Like these people are just ridiculously good athletes. So... Moving on to more ridiculously good athletes, the men's high jump finals. We had Dontavius Hill placing first, mm. of course, out of 12 competitors with a jump of 2.21 meters. And then TJ Funches placed eighth with a jump of 2.0 meters. I'm surprised TJ didn't get up there a little bit higher. Um, but we also saw, I think it was Dontavius who didn't you know, have as strong of a performance in nationals, wasn't it, uh, as well. So, you know, it just depends on the day and how they're feeling, all that kind That's of stuff. That's exactly right. Sometimes it's, you just don't have it on that day. It's the way the wind blows. But I would suspect that Dontavius and TJ are going to be a great team in this event going forward. Absolutely. All right. The pole vault finals. Matthew Asplund, the freshman, he got fifth out of six competitors with a 4.65 meter jump. And then now we're in the throw-in Wouldn't things. Wouldn't it be a vault, That'd not be, a jump? It's. I think we had this debate one other, one it's other time. It's a vault. It's literally a jump that you use a pole to jump. Because you have to jump up with it. Therefore, it's a vault. I'm going to call it a jump. I'm going to call it a vault. Ju just to spite you. Somebody, somebody let us know. I don't know how you let us know. Well, it's probably like... Text us. The technical term us, is vault. But it's, it's Facebook you know, us. Do people it, still Facebook? 
do whatever you do to let us do know. Do people still Facebook? What year do you think this is? Well, you know, people are doing that TikTok stuff. <laughs> All right, about the TikTok stuff. Uh, the men's shot put it, moving on to the throwing events here. Adam Strau, freshman, uh, fourth out of 17 competitors, 17.23 meters, just outside the top three. Uh, John Murray, the freshman, 14th out of 17, with a throw of 13.20 meters. Hey, Auburn family, we're going to take a quick breather from this episode to bring you an important message. One of the most well-known things about Auburn fans is how loyal they are, and we show that loyalty by the colors that we wear. Let us help you stock up on those colors by going over to our tpublic.com store. There you'll find a variety of merchandise geared towards designs based on E2C Network and Auburn content. While TeePublic is known for their t-shirts, they have a wide selection of merchandise options for you to select one of these designs to be put on. They also have other types of apparel, stickers, mugs, and much more. Here's the beauty of it. Your purchase will help support this network and the content that we regularly produce. The purchase will also go to support independent artists who put a lot of hard work into designing these concepts, especially for you, the Auburn family. And did I mention that they regularly have sales? T-shirts for $13? You have to be kidding me. If you're ready to explore your purchase options, head on over to tpublic.com slash store slash E2C Network. You can also get there by going to our website at e2cnetwork.com slash support. Now that you've got some options to suit up for game day, let's head back into this episode. Now, moving on to some more throwing events, the men's hammer throw, we had Kyle Brown placing third out of 15 competitors with a throw of 65.13 meters. Then Eric Ebel placing fifth in a throw of 63.12 meters. And final Kyle, finally Kyle Moisson mm -hmm. placing 10th with a throw of 54.43 meters. So what y'all don't see again, because this is a podcast, one of my favorite things is Kyle cheering me on as I mess up these people's names every time. It's, it's always, you know, you got to have support cheerleaders behind the scenes. I appreciate that. So next for the men's javelin, we had Josh Wallace placed second out of 19 competitors for javelin. I've lost with, track of how many placed, like first, second, and thirds we've had at this yeah, point. Yeah, it's a lot. With a javelin throw, I don't know. A, a throw? throw. <laughs> 62.32 meters, followed by Eric Ebel placing third with a throw of 62.01 meters. We're going to call it a jav for short. Ooh, I like that. It sounds a like jab. Sta a jab. I'm going to jab you. More jab, yeah. Sounds a little violent, but okay. Well, it would be violent if you got stabbed by a jab. Wow, okay. Well, a little graphic for a family show. Uh, we'll finish Who out... this was a family show? I didn't agree to that. We'll finish out the throwing and the men's events overall with the discus throw, something we didn't get to talk about a lot at all in indoor. Kyle Moisson, uh, both of these are freshmen, ninth out of 20 competitors with a throw of 49.06 meters. And then David Edmondson bringing up the back of the pack with 20th out of 20 competitors. 30.01 meters. That is the men for Auburn in this event, or in this and now overall thing. To the ladies. All the single ladies, all the single. Sorry. Nobody said they were single. I just, it was the we first. Said ladies. It was the first song that popped in my head. Forgive me. You are very sing tonight. That's I, not a word. It's it's late, and that's what happens. I sing a lot. At home. You should know this. Yeah, that's. You, true. You've been living with me long enough to know that that's what happens when I'm tired. Unfortunately. Okay, women. 100 meter dash. We had Destiny Charles, a freshman, placing 13th out of 29 competitors with a time of 12.06 seconds. Tyler Col Colbert uh, placing 18th with a time of 12.2 seconds, followed by Myra Mack, a junior, placing 20th with a time of 12.25 seconds. Pretty, I'm, I'm not mad at that. Pretty good. Pretty good start for these women for the 100 meter dash. I would definitely say just comparing the men and the women here, the stronger points are the sprints for the men, and then probably the distance for the female in terms of the running events. It, Fair, it but tends also, to be. but just wait, because two of these ladies did the 200 meter dash, and that is actually their event. You can tell. So Destiny Charles did the 200 meter dash, placed third. Yep. Out of 41 athletes, where did 41 women come from? Also to do this 200 meter. Everything else is like, uh, 20 athletes, 15 athletes, 41! Everybody came from out of the woodwork to do this half-lap sprint. And anyway, Destiny got a time of 23.77 seconds for that uh, bronze medal. Bronze medal. Yeah, I'm just thinking of it as a half-lap sprint. That I've never thought of it that way, but you're right. But it is. It absolutely is. Not if you were an indoor, it'd be a full-lap sprint. Oh, yeah, because it's smaller. 
go because it's a 200 meter track and it's banked and not flat exactly and it it, sucks brought it all back around just like a bank track (laughs) oh my gosh okay Nia Benton Andrews also competed in the 200 meter dash placing 11th with a time of 24.53 seconds and then Myra Mack placed 21st with a time of 25 seconds flat all right, let's finish out some of these shorter races for the women. The 400-meter dash, Nia Benton-Andrews, freshman, tw- uh, finished 12th out of 23 with a run of 57.92 seconds. And then in the 800-meter finals, Lindsay Grenier. Have we talked about Lindsay? We have not. Brand, new to us. Brand new name for us. She unfortunately finished 22nd out of 22nd with a time of 2 minutes, 44.7 seconds but it's great to hear a new name and we'll get used to talking about her absolutely so now to the middle distance events the women's 1500 meter we had abby zane placing sixth out of 16 with a time of four minutes 32.1 seconds then faith bet placing 12th with a time of four minutes 35.3 seconds and samantha rogers 16th out of 16 with a time of four minutes 43.3 seconds auburn is just like eat up with rogers like oh my gosh evan evan what was the other one? Uh, and Samantha. Samantha. Jack. Jack, Jack, Jack Rogers. Yeah, we're just eat up with Rogers. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yes. I wonder if there's another sibling. Tons of them. Well, we... Is, they, no, we're no, not no. Gonna... no, silly. Oh, another Rogers is what yeah. you're saying. Uh, well, I mean, you know... You no, never know. You just never know. They could know. just be a running family. I love it. So, next up, we got the women's 3,000 meter. We had Abby Zane. She's a junior placing second out of 18 athletes with a time of 9 minutes, 48.7 seconds. Followed by Faith Bet placing fourth with a time of nine minutes fifty six point five seconds, and finally Samantha Rogers placing eleventh with a time of ten minutes twenty three point three seconds. All right, I'll finish out the running and then transition us into the running and jumping events because one of them involves running and jumping. Nobody likes those. <laughs> I'm kidding. As Jessica has made evidently clear this episode, the women's five thousand meter first though Sarah Pacer, the sophomore, finished fourth just outside the top three of twelve competitors in a time of 17 minutes 37.4 seconds now to the transition events of yes. running and jumping what the, are they are they field events are they running events i would say that they're on the track so they're running events but you also jump over stuff but I, I would say if you're not because there's the track and the field right so if you're not in the field but this is track and field right so but if you're not in the field but if you're not on the track or the field you can't be one or the other so you got to be on one one of them mm. Just, just that's, some. That's some logic. I'm just saying. I'm not. I don't know a lot about you know the technicalities of this, but I can get logical with some of this stuff. Because I would have said this is a field event. <sighs> no, this is this is definitely a track. You're event. jumping over stuff. I'm jumping to conclusions on this statement. Okay. <laughs> uh, the women's 100 meter hurdles. Natasha Jordan, the senior, sixth out of 24, with a time of 14.03 seconds, and then the women's 400 times four of that last event hurdles morgan milliken the junior 16th out of 16 with a time of 69.61 seconds that is all the running events they're all the track events jessica you know it just absolutely kills me in my heyday back when i was a runner i loved the 400 i wasn't great i wasn't terrible i was mediocre my fastest time in the 400 was 62 seconds this girl did 69 seconds and launched herself over hurdles she almost had the same time as me, but she was jumping over hurdles. And unfortunately, there were still 15 people faster than her, so you couldn't even catch oh. Morgan here. <laughs> so. Kyle, not even in my best day of being an athlete. Back in am, my day when I was a track star. I'll say, right now, if I tried to run a 400 meter and jump over hurdles, it would take five minutes. Let's be honest. Well, no, it wouldn't take five minutes because you'd be tripping over yourself. I'd be in the hospital. Yes. Yeah, it'd be over quicker than you could actually run it. <laughs> First hurdle, dead. <laughs> God, over with. <laughs> Hematoma. Boom. Oh, wow. Again, this is getting graphic here. I know you're a nurse, but you don't have to like I'm just... I'm that talked about the jab, stab. Well, no. So I just said jab, and then you started taking... Oh, yeah, it's like a stab. Uh. No, you said that. We escalate this show <laughs> for some reason. What has happened? Okay. The women's high jump. That's not violent. (laughs) I'm sure you'll make it violent somehow. So we had 15 competitors. Natasha Jordan placed first, though, out of those 15 with a jump of 1.76 meters. Then we had Kamaya Dendi with a second place finish and a jump of 1.71 meters. And Allison Tanner placing eighth with a jump of 1.66 meters. So really strong competition. 
Yes. By Auburn. Yes. I'm going to give a shout out here to Allison. I want to see you up in the top three so we can sweep this event in future uh, meets later coming up down the line. Because okay. we've had a lot of these already. Natasha and Kamai already up there. Allison, call out to you. I'm looking at you. Do it for me. I like Bring it. me the sweep. It's not enough for gold, silvers, and bronzes now. I need the sweep. The entire, I need the podium. Bring me the podium. Wow. Talk about violence, Kyle. No like, more medals, podiums. That's what oh I want. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, women's pole vault, we had one competitor, so no podiums here. But we had Lexi Lena Weber. She's a freshman. She plays fourth out of ten with a vault of 3.82 meters. As our lone representative, can't ask for much more. Uh, almost getting up there on the podium. Yeah. But, uh, a pretty solid start for her on the outdoor season. Uh, we'll move on into some more jumping events. I'll round us out. The long jump for the women's, Imani Jones. All of these are going to be juniors. Third out of 18, she gets the bronze for her jump of 5.93 meters, followed by Cassandra Carlisle, the junior. Uh, 12th out of 18, a jump of 5.29 meters. Sarah Little, 15th out of 18, with a jump of 5.13 meters. Now, one of those interesting events that are just oddly interesting to watch yes. the triple jump for the women imani jones you are amazingly talented for doing this event imani third out of eight competitors um 11.64 meters was her jump to get her the bronze let's talk about triple jump for half a second so long jump in and of itself is really methodical right high jump is too all of the jumps let's be honest but triple jump and the amount of times that you could scratch and be disqualified mm -hmm. And this girl did not. That in and of itself, first of all, you get props for me for not being disqualified. Second of all, to place in the top three, that's amazing. I mean, think about it. So you've got a time just right running a full sprint down the path to do yeah. the long jump. Yeah. You've got a time one, two, three, and it's your final launch that you really got to make count. Yep. So you're like doubly concentrated on that last one as opposed to putting all your concentration on this one jump. Yep. And let me just tell you, those little, I call them a line judge. I don't know what they really are in the jumpins. In the jumpins? But they're watching your feet. What is the jumpins? You know, the jumpins, like the long jumpins and the high jumpins. Okay, now we're, we're, this is no longer tracking. This is tracking jumpins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, they're watching your feet like, oh my gosh. That's why I could never do the field events. Because they're, they're just like really intense. And they're like, <laughs> they're blowing that whistle real quick. One more time. I'm going to need that sound. <laughs> Okay, that was a different whistle that time. <laughs> but they disqualify you so quick, and you're like, great. I just wasted all my energy doing nothing. Now I'm disqualified. Now I'm just going to walk back like a sad little puppy on my walk of shame. Jessica, are you speaking from experience? No, but that that was always my fear. Like, I just knew it was going to happen. You, you had some vivid descriptions of because that. I watched it happen to so many people, and I would just get secondhand embarrassment for them. You ever had that? I feel like she's hiding something, folks. We'll dig that up later. No, no, no. Okay, women's shot put. We had Jocelyn Budwig, the sophomore, placed seventh out of 28 competitors with a throw of 15.63 meters. Then Mara Hewalt with an eighth place finish and a throw of 15.53 meters. And finally, Tori McKinley, the junior, placing 17th with a time of time, a throw of 13.52 meters. I'm shocked that Tori wasn't higher in this event. I am too a little bit, but it seems to be a pretty highly competitive event. You know, arena. Well, we, we did talk about there's a lot of, you know, bigger teams here, name, yep. team uh, athletes gonna be, that you're going to be seeing later on, especially in postseason play. So maybe that's not surprising. It's just, I'm not shocked that Jocelyn's up there. I just thought Tori would have gotten maybe up in the top 15, top 10, close to the top 10. Well, it's only the first outdoor meet. Absolutely. We have time. So moving on to women's discus, we had Jocelyn Budwig again, placing seventh out of 23 athletes this time with a throw of 46.86 meters. Then Tori McKinley placing 12th out of 23 with a throw of 42.11 meters. You know, the thing that I, I, I'm noticing here, you know, Maddie's kind of locked down. I'm the hammer throw person. You know? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to talk about that in a second. Or Kylie's I, locked down that she's javelin. Jocelyn's like, you know what? I'm just going to be good at everything. I may not be the best at all these, but I'm going to just, because she's here doing well in shot Solid, put, disc, yeah. put, discus, and hammer throw as well. I was going well. to ask you, what's disc put? Just, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna let that go. Disc put. We disc, should make that up. Disc disc putt? Yes! You, you putt putt the disc? I feel like that's another sport all entirely. I love it. And there's spikes. <laughs> all right, we're going on another tangent here. All right, let me round this whole thing out for us. With the hammer throw, Maddie Malone, uh, one of our stars from Indoor, 
uh, keeps the tradition going, getting the third place finish out of 18th uh, with a throw of 62.14 meters. Jocelyn Budwig, uh, 10th out of 18 with a throw of 53.67 meters. And then Daniel Gregory, the freshman, 11.18 or out of 18 competitors, 53.40 meters. So just one podium person there. But we'll expect Maddie to be doing lots more. And finally, I get to talk about my girl because <laughs> she's waiting. got partially my name, Kylie Carter. I think they should let you throw indoors because I think you're that good and you wouldn't hit anybody anyway. Uh, I think what they should do is try to aim it up into the ceiling and uh, who can make it stick. <laughs> okay, anyway, she's back and she's already getting golds right off the bat. I mean, first meet. We had no doubt. We've been waiting two years for this. Kylie Carter, the senior, first out of 18, 54.76 meter throw. Ashley Carter, also a senior, so maybe not actually a sister if they're both seniors. Okay, so maybe I I went on a limb. Thank you. I I jumped to conclusions, as I said earlier. That was was a really bad pun that you were supposed to laugh at. Thanks for the support. Uh, Second out of 18, 48.46 meters. And Kiara McCarroll. The third place finish, 48.20 meters. Now, I just want to note, note something here. So happy that we've got a first, second, and third, and proud of each of these competitors. Absolutely. But I want you to notice the difference between Kylie oh, and, and Ashley. Ashley. Yeah. And this is the difference. 6.3 and meters. Notice what probably the difference is between the rest of the field. Right. That's we're not even talking about from the other schools. Right. Kylie is far and away the headliner of this event in at least these schools that we're seeing, but maybe in the Southeastern Conference. I don't know that they necessarily do conferences. They do conferences. Hey, I'm knocking on wood because I'm not going to jinx you, Kylie, like Jessica just did. But uh, I have high expectations this year. Absolutely. Well, that's it for the Tiger Track Classic, the first meet of the outdoor season. So Auburn comes back this week already, March 25th and 26th, at the Florida State Relays in Tallahassee, Florida. A meet that is very well known to all of us. And we get to return the favor because Florida State was just here. We'll head down to Tallahassee and run away with the Seminoles. Ha ha ha. So, War Eagle's back. War Eagle. Before you get out of here, we want to remind you of a couple of things. Head over to E2Cnetwork.com, our website where you can find everything that you'll ever need from us, podcasts, blogs, and even ways to help support the show. If you want to find individual episodes, you can download all of these on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. So until we see you again, I want to remind you of one thing, that here at the network, we believe in Auburn and love it. The only question remains, do you? Do you?